Welcome to the chemisode on biomolecules. This is about proteins and it's part one to do with proteins. This is about the structure of proteins and what the actual chemicals themselves, the molecules themselves, look like. Let's have a look at proteins, shall we? So it's obviously a three part series. We've got fats, carbs. If you haven't looked at fats and carbs yet, Go back, check them out, and let's have a look at proteins. Proteins have the general formula, this. They are called amino acids, and they have this general formula. They have an amino group, obviously the amino, they have an amino group, attached to a carbon, which has got a Z side chain. This can vary what is on here. This blue part here changes depending on what type of amino acid you have and then it's bonded to this carboxyl, carboxylic acid group here as well. So this is your general formula for proteins. We have an amino, a side chain, and a carboxyl. They're called amino acids because we have amino groups and we have carboxyl groups. Sometimes what you might hear is these amino acids get referred to as alpha amino acids or two amino acids. What this just means is that this side chain here is off this carbon. It's off the first carbon away from your amino group here. So it's one amino and then you have a side chain here. So that's what the alpha amino acid means as well. Moving on, let's look at how these guys actually are used to make up these things called proteins. They're used to make proteins by joining together with other amino acids and forming long chains of proteins. The smallest type of protein is obviously if you just have two amino acids together, and that's called a dipeptide. So this is a, sorry guys, not dipeptides yet. We're looking at zwitterions and how amino acids behave in different environments. Now, because we have an amino group here, let's have a look at this, an amino group here, and a carboxyl group here, what each one of these can do is act as an acid or a base. Now, the amino group is the, has the ability to act as a base where it can gain a hydrogen. Just look back here, we have NH2, so H2N if you will. This can act as a base and accept a hydrogen and form NH3 positive, like it has here. And as you know over here on the carboxyl group, what it can do is act as an acid and lose that hydrogen and become negative. Depending on where your amino acid is sitting, whether it be in an acidic solution or a basic solution, it will tell you what's going to happen and what your amino acid will look like. Your acidic region will have a lot of hydrogen around. Being acidic, as you know, acids have H plus everywhere. What will happen is your amino acid will act as a base with the acid that it's in and it will gain the proton and it will have this form here. So the zwitter, um, your amino acid, when it's in an acidic region, will have gained the proton and it'll have this form where we have the Z side chain being whatever side chain it is and NH3 positive. In a basic region, what will happen is your amino acid will act as an acid with the base it's in and it will lose the hydrogen. So what will happen is you'll form this general formula for your basic region. Now in between your acid and base, what an interesting thing can happen is your amino acid can form, well act as an acid and a base at the same time. It can gain the proton from um, on this side and it can lose the proton on this side. This is known as its Zwitter ion. The Zwitter ion form has both charges. It has a positive on one end and a negative on the other end. So this is known as a Zwitter ion. It's not necessarily doesn't necessarily happen at a pH of seven, right in the middle. Your pH for your Zwitter ion will depend on what amino acid you have. So what they'll the questions might ask you is what will be the form of your amino acid in a basic area? and then you'll write that. What will be the form as a Zwitter ion? You'll have both charges there. What you should be able to do is write down um, an example of how your amino acid will act as an acid or act as a base. And as when it's acting as an acid, what it's going, if I'll just go back here, 
when it's acting as an acid, what will happen is it will lose this hydrogen and form the um, negative ion. If it's acting as a base, it will gain a hydrogen here. So that's what basically the Zwitter ion se section means, that it can act as an acid or a base. This is what happens when it's acting as a base in an acidic region. This is what happens when it's acting as an acid in a basic region. Now, moving on, and now we're going to look at what proteins actually look like when they come together. Let's have a look at it. Here is peptides. Peptides are basically chains of amino acids joined together by what's known as a peptide linkage. We have two peptides here, so we have two amino acids here, sorry. And what can happen is the OH of your carboxylic region and your H of your amino region can join together and form water and you can form this peptide linkage. This peptide linkage is what holds the proteins together. This is what connects them together. So what happens is a condensation reaction between your OH in your carboxyl and your H in your amino um, group and they join together to form your peptide linkage which is circled here and water. It's a condensation reaction. So this is what your peptide or your dipeptide will look like when you have it there and the peptide linkage is circled. This is called a peptide linkage. So it's a condensation reaction forming a peptide linkage and water where you're joining two amino acids together. Here's the steps on how to draw peptides. The way I like to do it, which means I won't screw it up ever if I follow these steps, is like this. I start off with a peptide linkage. I start off by just simply drawing my peptide linkage in. My peptide linkage is a C double bond to O, single bond to N, and a single bond down to hydrogen. What I then do, once I have my peptide linkage, I can put the two side chains in that I know um, are in my peptide, I first of all do one side chain on the left hand side, my first one on my left, and my second side chain on the right hand side here. What I then do is draw the terminus in. My NH2 is always on my left here, and my N, my C um, double OH is always on my right. So what this is, this step one, step two, step three, will help you draw your peptides. You always start off with your peptide linkage, putting your side chains, and then putting your terminuses. If, for instance, if you need to draw two peptides, so if you need to draw more than just a dipeptide, what I'll do is first of all put in my, um, what is it called, my peptide link, do my, two, my first two side chains, and then I'll draw another peptide linkage here, and then, I would finish it off at the end, all right? So, I would always do peptide, draw the side chains, and if I needed to add another one in, I would then just put another peptide linkage on the right-hand side here. But, that's how you draw proteins. And we're gonna have a couple of practices at this in class, just so you get the idea. If you need to, um, the Chemisode app has a few examples of drawing the um, these proteins as well. So you can have a look at the biomolecule section in the Chemisode app and try and find where it says about drawing peptides. I think I put in a, in a couple of dipeptides and maybe a tripeptide as well where you're, you're joining three, um, three different things together. Moving on, let's have a look at naming peptides. Basically all your amino acids are in your dump page eight and nine. It shows you the structure, or this, at least the semi-structure, for all the amino acids that you really deal with. All we need to do when naming peptides is list the symbol in order in which they are joined. For instance, the symbol there is um, a three-letter word, three-letter name, which is um, unique for each peptide or for each amino acid. For instance, this peptide here, this dipeptide, we have our first one here, which is alanine, and our second one, which is um, this cis one here. So we have ala cis. That's how we name our peptide. We first of all look for our NH2 as our starting point, and then we name from the left to the right. 
So simply just by putting down a symbols there. And that's all this is about. So what this was about, this podcast was simply about, um, it was how to, what the proteins look like, what amino acids look like. Um, there's the Witter ions, so you should understand how an amino acid can act as an acid or a base and what it will look like after it acts as an acid in a basic region or after it acts as a um, base in an acidic region. And you should have an idea about how to draw peptides and also, if you're thinking about it, going back as well and how to break peptides up. So think about where your peptide linkage and cleave it straight down the middle, put an OH on one end and a H on the other side. Hopefully, um, that's all right. The next one is looking at uses in proteins and where they can be used, and we'll get on with that very, very shortly.